Hello, and welcome back to America Then and Now. Hope you're enjoying a few of the videos I've been making. Uh, I'm going to be doing this growing up southern uh, videos also. It's going to be part of America Then and Now. And uh, today, for some reason, I was thinking way back uh, to a dog I had. Now, growing up in the South, we hunted, we fished, uh, and having hunting dogs uh, was just part of life. You know, you don't have to understand hunting to appreciate this story, uh, but uh, it helps because I'm going to tell you a story of something really extraordinary. Um, rarely, 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 rarely uh, in our lives do we get to be a part of something extraordinary. Uh, it just doesn't happen with any regularity. Um, so it's special when it does happen. Uh, when I was about who. Oh, 14 or 15, I think maybe in December of my 14th year here on earth, I got a little beagle puppy because uh, I rabbit hunted all the time and uh, rabbit hunting lets you have, you know, a little pack of dogs and your friends and y'all got, to, you know, everybody got together and uh, it's always a good time. Uh, rabbit hunting is a very social sport and running beagles, you know, competition or just going out and listening to the dogs and just telling stories while you listen to the dogs. All that is a, that's a big part of me growing up. And, uh, but I got this little beagle, I named him Rebel. Um, and uh, nothing the first couple months, you know, all, all you're doing is just raising and feeding the little beagle. And uh, as he got a little bit older, I started training him a little bit. I had some rabbit fur, and I was drag it around and let him chase it into bushes and chase it down a hole. And I was trying to teach him little things. And um, he was a fast learner. He was not a, he grew up not being a big beagle. He grew up being a 14 inch beagle. But by the, when he was about four and a half, pushing five months old, uh, we were always out taking walks and things like this. And he started and ran his first rabbit, uh, which is really early uh, in beagle development or any, any kind of hound development but they're starting to grow. And I popped that rabbit. I had a 22 with me, and I popped that rabbit, and that was our first run. And over the period of a few months, you know, the dog never stopped. He was relentless. If he was out of the pen, he was relentless uh, pursuer of a rabbit. And he got good fast he could find rabbits really really fast and by the time his first hunting season came around people already knew about this dog you know some of my family wanted to, that dog wanted to buy that dog and you know a few hundred dollars at that time was a lot of money to a little kid but I never would sell my hunting dog and um, he um Astounded everybody for his age at that time that first year just a, an amazing dog You know out there hunting with seasoned veterans and this dog shine like a diamond uh, and as We got a little older as he's a couple years old or whatever everybody knew the stories um, He could find no matter how inclement the weather, no matter how rough the terrain, no matter how thick the foliage or whatever, if he went in there and there was a rabbit, it was coming out. 
he was what we called a strike dog, and he could find anything. If it had hair, if it's a rabbit, he's going to find it. And he was the best of the best, even at a couple years old. I'd never, in all the beagles I'd raised, all the beagles I hunted with, I never saw anything that approached his level. Um, and, you know, it gets a little older, you know, he's, you know, and the stories keep on coming. And the things that we saw him do were uncanny. Uh, I'd seen I'd seen him dive off into water. I remember one time hunting, and we shot a rabbit, and it ran, tried to run across a big old creek. And the rabbit never came out of the creek, but Rebel went into the creek. And Rebel brought out that rabbit, dove underwater, and brought the rabbit out. Wow. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen that since. And he'd done it several times. Uh, we had, where I come from, we have these big, giant swamp rabbits. Uh, they're, they're like, you know, four to six pound cottontails, uh, but they're known for making really, really long races, uh, doing, going through extraordinary means to hide, you know, from the hunters, hide from the dogs. And, uh, one of the things they like to do, and this is usually where a race would stop, is they would run out into the water. And they would sit down in the water with their nose sticking up. Uh, lots of people have never seen that. Lots of people may not even know that they do that. Rebel knew. And if a race went out toward the water, went in the water, uh, guess what? We had Rebel. He knew the tricks. And he would, I remember one time we watched him run out on the end of a log and he started baying and we couldn't figure out what was going on yet. Next thing you know, Rebel's in the water and he's out making a circle. He's out making a circle in the water, getting closer and closer and closer. And eventually the rabbit got so scared they had to jump out of the water and the race started again. Um, seen him do that on many occasions. Usually this is where a race would stop. Uh, but you just couldn't get past what this dog knew naturally. Um, he was a hunting dog. He had no other excuse to, on earth other than being a hunting dog. But he was a great pet, friendly, sweet. Uh, but his mind was always on hunting. If he was out with me, he was busy. And extraordinary stamina, be hunting all day and at the end of the day you, he was so hurting so bad from running that you just had to pick him up with a little like kit gloves you know and put him in the dog box he'd give 150 percent all day you can't ask for any more snow he loved the snow or some dogs would be out in the snow it's so cold i don't want to go out i don't want to go out and here he is like a little puppy he's out out sliding in the snow and running his back up against the snow and uh, just enjoying being a hunting dog. Um, lots of extraordinary things. Um, I remember one time standing with my friends and we're listening to the race, a race, but here comes, I can see Rebel coming. He's not with the other dogs. There's something going on. And he's running, not full sprint, but he's he's running. And right within maybe five yards of us, he dips his head down and comes up with a rabbit in his mouth. Look at he split that fast. And we're all standing there up. Didn't know he was there. Rebel knew. So the legend of Rebel grew. He was a big hound and a small body. He loved fighting possums and raccoons and 
you know, when we were, especially when we were young boys, we enjoyed every minute we could, you know, and all that was just excitement. That was the extra gravy if we brought home a raccoon or something like that. Uh, but he was a, a secretariat of his breed uh, at that time. There just wasn't, I'd never, ever, ever seen anything like him, and he was mine. Uh, and he lived, he lived pretty long. I got, I, uh, he died during, I guess, my first year of being married. So I was 25, 26. He, he got, he was almost 13 years old when he died. And I quit hunting him after, after he was about 10 years old. I decided I just didn't want to push his little body. You know, I didn't want to lose him in the field. Um. We'd hunt him every once in a while, but he, to the day he died, on his own, I never, I never pinned him up after he got old. Uh, we lived in the country, uh, and just let him do his thing, let him be a beagle. If he was tired, he'd lay on the porch. If he wasn't tired, he's out running through the bushes and getting a chase going. Um, that's the way we all should go. We should never wait on death. Uh, we should make death wait on us. Uh, but anyhow, uh, a cool story of something really special, and there's no worthy description other than what I told you. Uh, you just got to imagine you every time you were out with Rebel, you got to see, usually you got to often see something extraordinary, something that the breed does not uh describe what this dog was capable of. Um, so anyhow, I hope you have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you later. So bye-bye.